All right, brother. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we've got 70 guests on already and growing here, so I really appreciate you coming in. Um, for those of you who don't know who Seb is, Seb's a good friend of mine, but on top of that, he's um, he's got a military career, past military career. He's one of the top ERT guys, which is emergency response team for British Columbia, the RCMP, the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu Black Belt, a guy that did a thousand muscle ups without any food in a row. I can go on and on and on. Right. So um, when somebody asks me what's Seb like, I'm like, he's kind of like the Canadian David Goggins, in my opinion. So um, good friend. Thank you so much for coming. Um, obviously, this is a new year, new you or whatever you want to call it. So we wanted to kind of talk about that, a few different things. Um, and one of the main reasons we really wanted you on board today as well, because obviously you were one of our um, speakers at the BAV series, uh, some, uh, the BAV um, series that we did. And we literally had everybody reach out to us afterwards, wanting us to bring you back on and talk. Like you're definitely one of, they're all awesome guests, but you're definitely one of the most spoken about a guest because obviously at the end of the day, you're not in real estate. So it's, mm -hmm. a, it's a different beast in and of itself. So thank you so much for coming on again, brother. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me. Good morning, everybody. Awesome. So just how you guys know, this is obviously a little bit of a webinar, not as interactive as regularly what we do. Um, but if you, I do have a chat session, there's a Q&A portion. If you have questions and we got time to get along with it, then um, I will definitely ask that out. So if you got anything, please put it in the chat box and we will uh, try to get those going. All right. Okay, bro. First question. <laughs> New Year's resolutions. Love them or hate them? I don't really have a love or hate relationship with many things, unless they're humans or animals. Um, but it, it is a thing. Uh, it is it is a, a chance to reset for some. It is an excuse for others. It is a justification. It's it's a reset on how I'm not going to do anything that I set forth to do this year because now I reset it. So I said I would. So therefore, the timer starts again. So it depends. It at the end of the day, it, de it depends how it's applied, and and it de it depends how reasonable the goals are. It depends how actionable the goals are, and what the steps that you intend, and what are the specific steps that you intend to take to make it happen. So that's how I feel about that. Like I don't have any overwhelming feeling one one way or another. I just generally we know where they go. Yeah, and generally they mostly fail most of the time. I would say because, like you said, it's an excuse. Do you set New Year's resolutions or do you just set New Year's goals or what? What do you personally do? Not really. And just to clarify, res New Year's resolution don't fail. People that make them fail. Right again, in, in the spirit of of taking that victim mentality out of things. It's basically the reason why New Year's, New Year's resolution or any resolutions or any anything that we set our mind to do doesn't work is because of the person that, that doesn't make it work, not external factors. And so once we start taking control of that and taking ownership of that, it really helps, um, you know, getting things done. So, no, I don't I don't specifically do resolutions. What I do and, and this is kind of like. It may be different for some, but for me, I see this kind of like the Remembrance Day thing, right? Like on the on the November 11th, everybody all of a sudden is concerned with veterans and, and the history, and that's great. But the rest of the year, you know, is there thoughts of that? Is there actions that are con congruent with re sort of um, honoring the sacrifices that were made, those types of things, right? And And so how you live your life every day is much more telling than what you do on November 11th. So for me, it, it, it goes hand in hand with that. It's basically, if I'm on track and I, and I, I have my period period periodical touch up, I can't speak this morning. I'm sorry. My, I haven't had coffee yet. And I don't, I don't speak any of the two official languages again. Um, but, 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 but yeah, if I, for me, it's more about touching base or, or, or point touching some of the, some of the key areas that I, you know, perhaps I've e either not necessarily neglected, but I've taken a back a back seat on some of the priorities or some of the reprioritization. Because if you could, if you continuously reprioritize, at some point, some of the things that are sort of lower priorities but are also important might not happen, 
and that can be an issue also. So it's just, I, as I do normally, periodically, every two weeks, every three weeks, every week, even depending, you know, what it is that that I'm looking at, um, I will continue to do that as the year roll into the next year. But more importantly, I take the time to be grateful. Be grateful that I was born in 77 and it's 2023. And somehow with all the stupid stuff I did over my career and over my life, I'm still here on this side of the grass and just taking the time to really appreciate that also. That's something I do consciously every time we switch into another year. So could I, could I, um, you know, not to simplify your words, but for myself, could mm -hmm. I say that maybe instead of, you know, new year, new me type thing, it's just a lot of reflection on like what I did, the grateful portions of the things that I've done in the last year, as well as things that I could have tweaked and how I'm going to start implementing that right now. And obviously it sounds like you're reflecting often and be like, okay, I can do this better. You're self-analyzing quite, uh, quite a bit. Um, but would that would that be like a correct analysis a little bit of more reflection versus, oh, I'm going to start being a new person today kind of thing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's it, at the end of the day, it's all about introspection, right? Like introspecting in our processes, introspecting in the things that we do on the daily, introspecting in our attitude towards others, introspecting in all the skill set, knowledge and abilities that we need to be successful in our respective field of endeavors. All of those things have to be consistently reassessed. You never get there. You know, I'm here now. I got communication. I'm good. You know, you, you don't. Uh, you, you, there's always a way to, to seek to take whatever it is that you are doing to the next level. And whether or not, but unfortunately, the only limiting factor is you only have 24 hours in a day. So you're going to have to 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 really um, make sure that the things that you focus on are the things that are in line with the end goal, which is your mission, your mission statement at the end of the day. You know, and once if the things are in line with your mission statement, then you can focus on them. If they are not in line with your mission statement, and I'm not just referring to work here, what is your work life balance life? And I know a lot of realtors don't even know what those words mean, right? And 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 I'm I was no different for for many many years. And sometimes for for a time, that is a strategy: being obsessed so that you may be successful. So. Just kind of a little bit on the trend, because this is a question and this is probably something that, well, 100% I felt in miserably in the past and so on and so forth. And I know a lot of people do. We get this New Year's resolution, our minds focus, we're ready to rock. Two weeks in, you know, I think the average gym membership, people start going for like two weeks. And then after that, they stop going. Mm -hmm. And they stop going. <clears throat> and I'm going to kind of give the benefit of the doubt, not just because they're lazy, mm -hmm but because it's also difficult and more importantly, boring mm -hmm. when you're doing the same stuff over and over again. So in your career, and obviously you've coached some very elite athletes, uh, military, police, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? Um, what have you found, like how have these highly successful people, including yourself, right? How have you guys overcome boredom and the regularity? Like one of the things that I hear all the time is like, Sean, like I don't want to do my calls anymore or I don't want to do this anymore, or I don't want to, it's just so boring. Like what, and, and I think a lot of it, our ADD and our attention looks for something that's easier. Somebody's offering a different plan. Somebody's offering a new type of marketing. Somebody, and we immediately search for that because we're bored of what we're currently doing, right? Mm -hmm. What are some of the tips and tricks that you've used and you've helped your athletes and everybody else use to over kind of come that, that boredom? Yeah, there's a lot to, to unpack here. In, in everything that you said, there's at least 12 different things that we could talk about. This it, It's a seemingly innocuous and very, very simple statement, but it actually isn't because it's much more than boredom. We live in a we live in a world of instant gratification. We we live in a world where we are constantly stimulated by high definition 4K footage with music and everything, and it's constant. It's we are bombarded from all angles, and 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 if you are somebody that has a propensity to to love snowboarding or this or that or the other, you can go down rabbit holes until you're blue in the face and never do never get another day of work done if you wanted to. And so the issue with that is a few things is a it's separate it's separated us slightly from humanity in terms of having connections, even though in your job is still pretty really important. There's a lot of other 
jobs and corporation where it isn't and and you're you're losing this it's a it's a losing art the the art of connection but you're also anything that that isn't overly exciting no longer gets your attention right and 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 the fact is fundamentally doing the work is called a grind for a reason the grind isn't just saying I'm on the grind or I'm starting the grind. The grind is actually being out there grinding out. And I've had a lot of people reach into me and ask for, you know, advice to get into the special operation world, do a variety of different things. And it's always the same problem. They have their first workout and then their post on the grind. And now the next workout is like, okay, dude, when I, when I was getting, when I was obsessed and when I was doing the work to get where I needed to be so that I could be successful in my pursuit. I was not on Instagram ever. I didn't even have an Instagram account. I didn't have an Instagram account until five years ago when I, when I was on the verge of leaving the team because my goal and my achievements and the things that I was pursuing madly were already reached. The rest of the time I was grinding and 4.15 in the gym, 4.30 in the gym. And it doesn't need to be 4.15 or 4.30, but those are the things I needed to do to get those 24 hours optimized, right? And so at the end of the day, there's a few things that can help people manage their expectations when it comes to getting something done that they set their mind to in the new year or not, any anytime. First thing, first things first is realizing that the best time to start something was yesterday. The next best time is today, not tomorrow. Okay, today, and it doesn't matter. It's never going to be perfect. Sean, as a as a former MMA fighter, you know as well as I do that much less skill, much more skilled as guide guys than you never fought because they were always waiting to be perfect. Oh, I need to be in shape. Oh, I need to have this. I need my jiu-jitsu needs to be better. My striking needs to be better. And next thing you know, five, six, seven, eight, ten years later, that ship sailed and they never fought. Right. Where, whereas you have other guys like Jeremy Kennedy, for example, who ended up in the UFC. And Jeremy was one of those guys that fought at every opportunity, even if he had major shortcomings. Right. So this is the difference between somebody that rises to the top. Now, one of the things that I like to do with my clients is what are your actionable steps? Stop looking, you know, so far ahead. When you talk to people about starting martial arts or starting a training program, the first question is, when do, do how long does it take to get a black belt or when do I get a six pack? Okay. Well, I can't tell you exactly how long individually it's going to take you to get a six pack, but I can tell you how long it's going to take you to be better than today. That's tomorrow. One day. That's all it takes. Okay. So you have to set those incremental goals and you need to have, you need to be alive and perceptive of the micro wins, micro wins, that's all life is all about, really. That's all that really matters. And so if I go and I go, okay, tomorrow I, I want to go to the gym. And tomorrow I wake up and I feel like garbage and I do not want to go to the gym. Now, sickness aside, I'm now, you know, perhaps I'm making stuff up in my head because really my body thinks, oh man, he's uncomfortable about, or he or she's uncomfortable about going to the gym. So they must be dying. No, you're not. So here's what I, here's what I do. Take your legs you know, and walk to the gym or do the, th do the drive or do whatever you need and, and go plan to be on the treadmill for seven minutes, go on the trail on the treadmill for seven minutes. If in seven minutes, you still don't feel like being there, leave mm -hmm. never happening. Mm -hmm. You're going to go, you're going to go and get the thing done. Like that's a fact. And it may not be the, you know, the most intense uh, metabolic conditioning session you've ever done, or, or perhaps you're going to have a mediocre workout, but a mediocre, mediocre workout is much better than none. Right. And so humans are operating in black and white <laughs> a lot. We, we are wanting all of this or none of this. Like we have no shades of gray. The entire pro, uh, sort of prospect of life is within shades of gray. Very rarely is it excess excessive you know like we're 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 all of this or all of that no generally it's somewhere in the middle a more measured approach and and that applies to our goal setting and it applies to the way we address the things that we need to do to get the things that we want the other thing that i always tell my my athletes or my or my other people i coach is keep your eyes on the mission and if you don't have a mission you have a problem like if you don't know what your actual goal or mission is also, in order to help you support the mission, are there some certain things that you could commit to that are going to help you maintain your, your discipline when things get rough? So when you guys are starting, you know, 
open houses here and there and everywhere on the weekend and whatever. And it's really hard to, to, to kind of go to the gym after that because you're exhausted because you're mentally consistently, you know, playing that tug of war game uh, emotionally and mentally with your client, trying to, you know, face rebuttals and 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 be able to to, to do the things that you do that, that you guys would know a lot better than me. But at the end of the day, you need to, you know what you need to do to achieve whatever goal you have set for yourself. And you need you need to be able to you need to be able to follow up on that even when it's when it's very very difficult so having a goal such as i'm going to do a half marathon i signed up with my cousin you know in 3 months or or in in 9 months from now i plan on competing in a take one do tournament like i don't care what it is like it could be absolutely anything but there's always things that you can do to keep yourself sharp and keep yourself in check but also to self motivate like people always talk about discipline and discipline is a very intricate and important part of this entire process. But I do not like when people say, well, motivation actually doesn't matter at all. It's like, yeah, that's cute, but it actually does. And you're lying. And the reason why you are lying is because I saw you competing in this and I saw you competing in that. Well, subconsciously, what this does is actually fuel your, 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 your um your your it it fuels your actions with respect to what you need to be doing so that you may capitalize on the things that you know you need to do and so don't be disingenuous and say that there's no that motivation does not factor in because it does to a certain extent but if you rely on motivation solely good luck it's it's never going to happen so again what do we see we see a, a measured approach, some motivation, self-imposed and otherwise, I like to take control of this. I don't like for motivation to be external, but certainly if I sign up for an event or if I do something, then I just inject in some motivation in my training regimen or in my, whatever it is. I mean, we're, we're obviously, this is all metaphorically applicable to you know a variety of different areas and you can take this and transpose it in whatever area you need some work. But those are some of the key sort of, advice that I that I that I give and they're actionable and they're quite easy to to implement right and so on that because I really like what you're saying so a self-motivation I'm 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 I love like a guy listen to Goggins and Jocko and all those guys and stuff so out, outside motivation I look at it as like uh an energy drink it's like a one-time mm -hmm. shot of boost, whatever, right? But that's not going to get you through the entire day. That's not going to make you do all the hard stuff. It's going to make you, you know, work out good for a half an hour, hour, whatever, maybe, right? And then, and then you'll uh, crash. Yeah, then you're going to crash, exactly, right? Um, but I really like the things that you were talking about. I know you and I have had in-depth conversations about this as a lot. Having long-term goals and having the, the mission like you're talking about is essential. I agree mm -hmm. with the 1 million percent. One of the things that we end up finding though a lot of times is that we procrastinate based on it because then we just think like that's too far away or whatever it is. And we've talked about that in the past before. Now these micro wins, and you talked about this, I absolutely love because that's the daily thing. And I think a lot of people, um, you know, myself included when I'm on like, especially I was an athlete before, right? Then I became a fat ass, right? And then now I'm back on my track to more of the athlete style. When you've been there and you're like, oh shit, how do I get, you know, I'm, I'm a fat ass now. Like it's a disappointment. You're, you're just self-talking doubt, negative talking yourself, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. It's hard to even start the process, right? So, I, and, and I'm sure you can, you know, one of the things I love what you say, right? Um, is, you know, I'm going to get back tra back on track just never get off track, right? <laughs> Even if it's just consistent, your life is so much easier if you just never get off track, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but people that got off track, these micro wins, you know, the one thing about that self-motivation that I find as well, and, you know, I'd love to hear your opinion on this, is once you start, you lose the first five pounds, the first three pounds, first 10 pounds, all of a sudden that motivation, because you've seen those results, starts becoming actually easier and you become habit and so on and so forth, right? Mm -hmm. um, how do you, for somebody that's just starting out, because a lot of these people are going to be like, you know, I, I had this hell week with my guys calling, 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 and they did two and a half call, uh, two and a half hours of calls. I'm like, man, this is super hard. Like, I don't know if I can do this. And in my head, and I literally said that maybe you should quit because at the end of the day, I used to do that for eight hours a day, mm -hmm. right? To be able to go through whatever the markets and so on and so forth are. So, but then, 
I've already had that motivation. I've already had that time set put behind me. I didn't start like that. How do you track these micro wins? And how do, if you're just starting today, sure, it sucks that you're starting late. Like you said, it should have started yesterday, right? If you start today, how do you make today a win and then carry that over till tomorrow? Mm-hmm. So it's all about reasonable reasonableness of expectations. So for me, when I hear somebody say to me, oh, I, you know, I just started working out. Oh, cool. What do you do? I train twice a day, seven days a week. I'm like, okay, next week you're done. Or in, or in two weeks, you're done. It's unsustainable. It's unsustainable for somebody, for most people that are serious athletes that have had this as a rule of thumb or have, have had this as a routine for decades. And so what you're doing is unsustainable. So sustainability of your actions is a win. Like, I don't care if you commit to twice a week and a hike. So you don't like to be in the gym. Cool. I totally get that. I, I you can do a million things outside the gym and never see the inside of a gym and be in great physical, condi- mental and emotional conditions because those things work hand in hand and they're not mutually exclusive. And so for me, it's more, it's more about setting reasonable expectations and they have to be low, set them low. This is the beauty of this whole process. You are self-imposing things that you are not going to stick to. This is like saying, okay, I got an idea, guys. I'm the boss here, and I'm going to put this unreasonable benchmark that you have to meet. And if we don't meet it as a team, uh, we're going to disband the business. It's like, dude, you just talked to yourself out of the market. You just talked to yourself out of business because you made a decision to affect you and your people on account of an unreasonable goal that may or may not be sustainable depending on outside factors and internal factors also. And now you cannot live up to the standard that you established for yourself. Well, I got an idea. How about you establish a standard that's regardless of what happens is consistently attainable? Right. And then and then once once you're you're you get into a routine and once you start seeing your work pay off and once you've accumulated a few wins, guess what? You can add a day and that doesn't change anything. You It actually doesn't like you, you will you will add a day or two. I always tell people, you know, hey, uh, uh, I've been looking at starting jiu jitsu. How long should I be doing it or how many times a week do you suggest I do it twice at the most? No more. Oh, I love it, but I want to do more. No, don't do it for six months. Once you've done it for six months and you've been religious about attending twice a week and you are confident that you can now handle the three times a week, go to three times a week and then four times a week. And one day you'll be training daily and maybe twice a day. Like I, I, you know, it's crazy. And so here's how this works. Don't try to make time for something that you are not in love with yet. Period. A process, and I'm talking about process here, right? It's kind of like saying, okay, um, uh, Sean, uh, I'm going to introduce you. I'm going to bring you on a blind date. Say you were single, which you're not. But if you were, and I said, okay, I'm going to introduce you to this person. So how many times would you like to hang out with her? Well, I don't know. I don't know her. You know what I mean? It's kind of the same. And I'm making a, a very simple simple correlation here, but it's exactly that. It makes no, it, it doesn't make any more sense in this situation or scenario makes sense. And so do the things, do the bare minimum when you start again. And, and when I say bare minimum, that will fluctuate depending who you are, what your personality type is and everything. But I tell you what, regardless of where you normally operate, especially if you're a former athlete or especially if you're a former performer, but you have fallen off a bit, do not set your expectations at the level at which you operated before. That guy is, is somewhere with that guy, that girl somewhere within you. But right now, it's it's not sustainable. And so for me, it's always about set a goal that's reasonable, that is so reasonable that you actually feel bad not, not upholding it because there is no excuse not to. I only have to go twice and I have to do a hike. Well, I got to take my dogs out to the park. I'm going to go to Bunsen and I'm going to do, you know, half the loop. And I had a great nature walk, reset it, my mental and emotional wellness, reset it, everything I needed to do, stay, stepped away from people because you're dealing with humans all the time. And it's draining, especially if they're confrontational and if there's negativity and drama and whatever the case may be, which we know is everywhere. And so really once you've done that what's left the problem is the problem of, of self imposed unreasonable benchmarks they have to be more than reasonable so if you think they're reasonable take them down a notch and that's you know it's almost 
completely opposite mm -hmm. of what most people are like, just go full hardcore. And I, you know, I'm even like, I go, I'm an extremist in many things that I do. Like I just, I want to go all out on whatever it is. But the one thing, and I'm just going to post this, you know, say this to the world is 99.9% .9 of the people, including myself, will never do a lot of the things that you have done, like the thousand muscle ups with no food and blah, all this other kind of, these are all highly, highly like elite level athlete type things that you've, you've done in, in, in your career so far. Right. Um, but you're the one saying that that didn't happen overnight. Right. So even though I look at it as motivation, it's like, oh yeah, I'm the kind of guy that I want to do. I want to be 1001 because you're automatically, <laughs> that's just where my brain goes as this competitive, whatever. Um, that is actually, that is one of probably the biggest failing marks of most people is that we're, and maybe that's part of, like you talked about that instant gratification, the fact that we compare ourselves to every fitness model on Instagram, every Lamborghini driving realtor that made 250 grand this year, but really just bought a 250 grand Lamborghini. So it's completely like, it's all fagazi for lack of a better word, right? And we're always using this comparison instead of internally looking, right? Mm -hmm. And I really love the fact that you're you're talking about incremental steps and finding those wins daily and even lowering that expectation. But to, to, to re, re, you know, reassess this, you also, though, it's like once you hit this plateau, you're consistently growing, mm -hmm. right? It's, it's not just like I'm here and I'm cool and I'm chilling forever. And that may be the case for some people, which is still better than doing nothing, right? But to be real, because I know you well, it's always one step up. But the cool thing about what you're saying, and correct me if I'm wrong, because I don't mean to put words in your mouth, but the cool thing is when you're doing incrementally small doses, there's always room for improvement. You can always increase half a percent, one percent. Mm -hmm. But overnight, you're going to get destroyed if you try to increase 100 percent to another 200 percent. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. And, and and just imagine, like, say, for example, if and we, we keep on using working out, but this, again, just to reiterate, is completely applicable to anything. So there's a lot of other areas of life, actually all areas of life where this could be applied. But think of it this way. If I set for myself a reasonable goal and a sustainable goal of going to, to the gym twice a week, and then this is say one gym session because I, I I hate being in the gym. So I one one gym session and one um uh hike, for example. And somewhere down the line, I'm like, you know what? I got time to get a little run in today, a little three Ks. What kind of win is that? That's amazing. I wasn't supposed to do a run this week, but I did. You know, and so now you're what you are starting to do is you're starting validation is massive in humans. It is. And outside, but most of the time we are looking for external validation. I'm wanting to worry about what Sean thinks of me instead of, you know, what, what do I think of me? What, what is my internal dialogue? Because that's all that matters in the end. You are not going to be defeated by what other people say of you. You're going to be defeated by what you say of yourself. Right. And so for me, it's, it's, it's just having something that's so achievable that if you do not make the minimum requirement you now have to seriously look as to as to why you didn't now let's let's break this down even a little bit more because like i said we we could go for 19 hours why don't you like to go to the gym what is what experience have you had that made you dislike it and can this be overturned with the right environment with the right training methodology with the right coach with the right you know and so for me i you know you know as well as anybody else i do not like to stay surface level i am constantly seeking to understand why i do the things i do i don't just do things and be like yeah well that's just me i don't like gyms it's like oh that's cute but that's not helping you at all it's not helping you figuring figuring out a way a way to start liking it more so that you may benefit from it more so now i'm going to start looking internally why don't i and there's always a reason and sometimes it's far back and some people are horrible at this and if you are 
That's why they got therapists for, you know, like go, go have a chat, like start digging, do things. If you're really good at introspecting on your own, and I don't mean to be condescending, some people are not good at this. And, and, and it's just a matter of practice. It takes time and eventually you will be good at it, but you need, you may need some help to begin with. For me, I've, I, I really mastered the art of digging deep into my own little quirks to see what drives me and what are some of the, the things that are interfering with my, say, my pursuit of excellence, right? And so all of those things have to be factored in. And once you start really getting down to the nuts and bolts of your inner workings, you can literally build, you know, a, 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 a little race car, you know, with all those little, you, you, you literally, you literally can extrapolate so much out of that. And then you're going to find out that these actually, these, these things that are interfering with your pursuit of excellence in one field or another are affecting you elsewhere. Cause we're not, we like to compartmentalize. And the reason why humans are doing that is so we can keep things manageable because there's so much information and we're overstimulated consistently. So all the information that we are getting, that we're consistently bombarded with, and all the information that our brains have to process to make sense of the world, we are flying on a ball of water, you know, in the universe. It's completely insane. How do we make sense of that? And then we work our entire lives and then we die wow, how do I stay, you know, motivated? And, 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 and how do I, how do I, you know, sort of give my all to this? Like, what is the actual purpose of this? And then you can go down the major rabbit holes, right? And so it's, it's, I think none of this makes sense. And so our brains are trying to simplify everything. As it turns out, what we actually do is oversimplify everything. And so in addition to this, if we are not looking deep enough into the pursuit of, of, of excellence from an individual and a personal standpoint, now we're double whamming ourselves, right? Like they, this is, this is kind of like externally, external factors are affecting my ability to perform at the level at which I could. And my internal factors are also impeding me from performing at the level at which I could. In order for you to manifest the things that you want to happen in your life, you need to understand why you are asking for them. You need to understand why you are not doing some of the things that you should be doing. You need to understand why and why and why. But also, don't dwell over the why and why and why. If I realize, you know, I, I'm not doing this because I'm scared, good. How, now I know I'm scared. How do I deal with the fear? How do, how do I deal with fear? How do I, you know, now you can start finding solution and problem solving dilemmas instead of consistently spinning your wheel, not knowing that there's an underlying part of you that's terrified, but you never admitted it to yourself. So you have no idea. Therefore, you are going to be stuck in that crazy loop forever until it's blatantly obvious that that's what's happening and somebody calls it out or some or or you come to that harsh realization in a critical or potentially catastrophic event so that's actually a really good segue and i like everything that you kind of um mentioned there what are some of the things because you kind of brought up these high high achievers and people that can differentiate and really dig down on what is creating this to go well or wrong or whatever it may be and why their emotions are attached to it and whatever it may be. What are some of the characteristics that you found from individuals that are highly successful that you've coached? Because I know you've coached some people that are like phenomenal athletes. Then they try to go into a tier one program and they just get destroyed. Mm -hmm. And then you have some guys that are like, just grunts may not be like the cream of the cream, right? And then they go through a program and they just outwork and just grunt it through every single day and vice versa, right? And I know, um, so what What are, if you could maybe give me a couple reasons, what would be some of the main reasons that you feel successful people are successful that they can apply obviously to everything? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I would start, I would start potentially with inner self-talk and, and people don't like to hear that because so here's how this goes. Humans in general are extremely detrimental to their own wellness by way of the way we are wired for survival. If I walked out of a cave confident that I can own the day, I would get killed by a saber-toothed tiger, right? 
I, I can't walk with my chest puffed out and be like, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to dominate this day. I was like looking right, looking left. Is there something that can kill me? Take my, you know, my, my, whatever those, those things are called. Like, hit the dinosaurs on the head with the club, the club. <laughs> the clubs. clubs. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and I'm going to make sure I have that. And then a secondary in case this one goes missing and, and, you know, those types of things. And, and obviously I'm, I'm oversimplifying it, but it is what it is. It's we're wired for survival. And as a result of that, we're very conservative machines and so every time that we our self-talk sends us down the wrong path we are actually um, spotlighting and i spoke to this before but the brain will spotlight the issue essentially making it magnifying it right so it, it will it will shine a, bi a big spotlight on it and say oh this is an area of risk there's a reason why you feel the way you feel it must be deadly it must be this it must be that now the problem is is not every single sort of primal reactions that we have to risk are healthy for us in fact some of them will kill you you know if 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 there's any of your of your of your folks that are riding motorcycles what happens if you're in a corner and you're traveling you're carrying too much speed you, what is the propensity to roll off the throttle because you want to slow down but when you roll off the throttle what happened your bike stands and if the bike stands where do you go straight Right. And so so a lot of times, you know, in motorcycle accidents and in other types of accidents, the primal reaction of the body to do the things it thought it needed to do to protect us actually killed us. Right. And so this is no different. And understanding that your, your body and your mind is such a conservative machine, you can start pushing the boundaries to an unprecedented level. And people are always afraid, well, when am I going to do too much? You are nowhere near doing too much. I can guarantee it. You are, you are not, and there is no way for us, unless you have lived an entire lifetime of pushing the boundaries, you are never, you're never getting there. Like you, you're, there's consistently, you know, things that can be done that, that will push the boundaries and you will still be safe. And when I say safe, Hey, this is rel relatively safe. We, 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 we're as safe as we're ever going to be in North America uh, as part, uh, you know, compared to some other parts of the world. But at the end of the day, death is is a normal part of life it's it's not the end of life it's an it's a part of life and and the sooner you make peace with that the the, so, the sooner you'll stop over inflating risk on absolutely everything so i went on a couple different tangents here and um so inner self talk definitely how do you override that just override it the word is as simple as what needs to happen if i'm if I'm here today and and I have a meeting, I have a Zoom meeting with townhouses and, and and I start thinking, when I was there last, there was some positive feedback. I had some stuff to work on. I'm very aware of that, despite you know what Sean might say or whatever. Like I I know myself, there's certain things I want to dial in so that I'm better next time when I show up and present for for your team. But now this morning we have this meeting. I'm running late. I have this. I have that. I you know I I had to quick quickly go to the washroom, do all those things. My hair maybe is messed up. I'm all frazzled. What Whatever. You know, I I could easily go down the drain of this isn't going to be this is not optimal. This isn't going to work. This is this is I don't like that. I need to have a warm up period. We need to have a bit of conversations, a bit of bonding, a, a bonding rather so that I can, you know, start firing the synapses that are capable of delivering the message in a way in which I want to deliver it, those types of things. But I didn't. I walked out of there and I sat here and I was like, let's do this. You're on. Yeah, it's not going to be perfect. A hundred percent, it isn't. It never is. But I was ready, ready to, ready to slay it, right? And so it's, it's no difference. It's no different with the athletes and the people that are doing that. Now, what happens is once you start self defeating, and once you start, once you really start affecting your own inner self talk, and your own, you start affecting your your self confidence. When you affect your self confidence, it moves you high in the hierarchy of the world. And if you think there are no hierarchy in the world, well, obviously, um, you're misinformed. There, there are, and, and in a non corrupt hierarchy, you it will lessen your stress if you know where you stand with amongst your peers that's just a fact and you don't it's not necessarily you have to be better or worse than this person or whatever but you just want to know where you stand so that you can make informed decision with respect to your future to your performance to whatever and so you will see and what i've seen on selection on multiple selections for for some special teams the person that starts self-defeating generally turns into a giant snowball. 
if they don't quiet it immediately. It's like zip it. Sometimes you, you know, as Les Brown likes, likes to say, sometimes you have to stand up inside yourself and say, shut up. And that is a fact. You need, you need to be, you need to be, you need to be using those types of language, like zip it. You don't have a voice here. And this is what I use all the time. You don't have a voice here. You know, that negative voice that comes out and starts chirping or whatever. It's like peanut gallery back there, you know, zip it. And so, but what you do see is this, people start self-defeating. People start going down those rabbit holes. Next thing you know, now the brain tricks them. Now it's like, oh, well, my girlfriend's at home alone and my son and all those things, all those factors that were there in the first place that those people agreed to support you to do something that's extremely difficult. But now you're going to put it on them as the reason why you're quitting so that you may go back to them because you've just realized how much they, how much you cared for them. But as soon as you've taken a hot shower and slept for six hours, you're like, what the hell happened to me? You know, you got tricked. You got tricked. And this is what happens. And so controlling your inner self-talk, controlling fear, fear, fear is a massively it is fear can be can be useful in moderate amount it can be useful if backed by reasonable evidence it can be useful when it becomes debilitating or when it becomes stifling or or leads to over processing paralysis by analysis whatever the case may be it can be extremely stifling so you need to be able to control to control fear also fear of failure fear of getting hurt fear of disappointing fear of not living up to the expectation you set for yourself, whatever, you know, whatever, whatever the fear or the fears are for you, 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 you have to, you have to, you have to learn to cohabitate. You have to learn, you have to learn to coexist with your fear. And for the good news, courage isn't the absence of fear. It's doing things despite the presence of fear. Right. And so those are all things that are in themselves validating and when you self-validate what happens, it lessens your stress level and you perform better. Like we are, we are complex creatures and we absolutely oversimplify everything we do. So we forget how complex we actually are. But I would say those two things in, in, in my estimation are extremely important. And then I would say self-belief, believe that you belong there, believe that you deserve to be there, believe that, yeah, Although you may have some sh certain shortcomings in certain areas that you can clearly identify by looking at somebody else, you do not see the entire picture. You don't. So don't, don't pretend that the person that, say, drives the Lamborghini, you don't know anything about this entire situation. There is a TikTok video out there with 30 million viewers of me in a mansion with a Lamborghini. I do not have that kind of budget. I have friends that helped me rent those, you know, uh, and it, it was just for for something fun to do. And it was it was just interesting. But at the end of the day, I got people filling my DM with, hey, man, can you help me make more money? I'm like, dude, I don't have more money. Like, this is what this is what the, the world has come to is we we take things a prima facie or like face value, so to speak. And, uh, and, and, and we think that we know it all. Like, I know the reality of that person. Like, what do you even care? Focus on you. Who cares what he's driving? Maybe he's not eating. Maybe he's eating craft dinner every day, you know? To add to that or yeah. uh, to question on that is that, and you, you mentioned this before, because a lot of times we, we look at others and be like, I want to be like that guy, but you really have, or gal, you really have no idea what that guy or gal is or who he is or where they do or what they do, or they can be a horrible human being for the lack of it. You just like what they put on Instagram, right? Mm -hmm. uh, do you feel that, because obviously, so it's self-talk, mm -hmm. like mitigating self-talk that you mentioned. Overcoming fear, and that's one thing that we're going to be, I wanted to talk about, especially in this market coming up for realtors and so on and so forth. And then um, would you say then it's, you know, inward focus more like focusing on like, are these, are these people like, fuck, I don't give a shit about everybody else. Like, no, not in a negative tone, obviously, but at the end of the day, like, I just care about doing what I say I'm going to do today. Mm -hmm. Like, I just care about executing on me. What this guy does or what this gal does makes no difference, right? So it's, do you find that these, because that's one thing that I've seen over the year, I've had the pleasure of having clients that are billionaires, having friends like you that are, you know, commando machines, right? At the end of the day, you guys all look 
for guidance. Like everybody is looking for mentors, guidance, help. Like you have no problem asking for help from somebody that's better than you and vice versa at certain aspects, right? But I think of the days you're always staying in your own lane. And at the end of the day, you're like, this is my life. The only car that I can drive in my life is my car. Nobody else's car really matters to me. You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. I noticed that about you. I've noticed about that. A lot of these guys, they, they comp- the comparisons are much, much, are much smaller. Like, obviously, everybody naturally compares themselves, but they have that switch. It's like, okay, that's cool. I may want to implement that because that's something that I feel like might help or better my life. But I'm not going to base my life and my commitments and movements based on somebody else. It's like this Mm. inward, it's almost a little bit of selfishness to be honest, Mm. but, but selfishness for a better cause. Let's just put it that Mm. way. Is that, is that something that you can kind of relate to? Am I saying it right? Yeah. I mean, um, yeah, it, it it can certainly be interesting. Uh, I mean, in the sense that, I wouldn't go to the extent of, and and I know that's not what you were saying, but just so we clarify, I wouldn't go to the extent of being so focused on me that I obviously disregard the collective and disregard others. Because at the end of the day, yeah, the more the more the, the more you you put out in the universe, the, the more comes back seemingly, right? But totally. and just just to clarify, I mean, yeah. you basically had your life on the line for the last 30 years. So mm-hmm. obviously the selfishness is not for that, but mm-hmm. more or less where your mind is, mm-hmm. you're you're selfish on who takes time in your mind and what what time you what block you give into your mind. That's more oh, like Oh, absolutely. I mean, that's that has to be done and a cleanup needs to happen. And generally it happens when people turn 40. You know, bef- before that, it's kind of like we we carry a lot of dead weight. And and when I say that, I mean that respectfully. I mean, some people you just can't help. Some some people, there is there is no amount of coach coach coaching or 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 mentoring or 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 being there for them that is going to stop the drainage on you because ultimately their dopamine fix and their the way they react to their own predicament is that they see seeking help as a step forward always. And so they, just like the New Year's resolution, they are resetting themselves every time they talk to you, right? But they don't go anywhere because they don't do anything with it. So there's a variety of different things here. But another another piece we didn't speak to is coachability. In order to be coachable, you need to be humble. In order to be humble, you need to have an understanding of where you stand in the world and understanding that some of the insecurities that you have so that you may overcome them. Because at the end of the day, insecurities will shine, you know, and when I say shine, not in a positive light, but definitely if, if I'm looking at you, for example, and I've been struggling to make ends meet and you're running a one, a $2 billion business, um, it's easy for me to, to, to skip to hateful mode. Like you must be doing something or, or whatever, you know, I could start deflecting all these things on you on account of feel my feeling of inadequacy at the time. But if I'm self-confidence in my own being, in the things that I've chosen to do in life, and the path that I chose was not a path that led to money. So maybe now I can change this and I can reframe my reality. But for the longest time, I knew that money was not the the predicating factor the uh, or the the successful benchmark, so to speak, right in my world, because there was a certain limit that you could make a year and that's it. You know, that was that. But then there were other things. So my purpose was different. There were other things that paid me dividend 10 times more than making a million dollar a year, as far as I was concerned. And if you would ask me to exchange it, I wouldn't have taken it at all. There's no question. So maybe a year, but not the other years, (laughs) just so I'm set. But, um, but, but, but so having having make making peace and again it this goes back to the introspective part why do i react the way i react and so what i started doing with this also is doing it when i have an adverse reaction to someone or something so i can watch a, a short clip a short 10 second clip from someone and be like Ugh, i you know i don't know why is this causing me a reaction and why am I reacting so quickly? What do I know about this guy or this girl in 10 seconds here? Absolutely nothing. So why is this bringing to light? Why am I having a reaction, which is by all account, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Mm. 
it, it, the reaction, it's an overreaction to a very simple stimuli. And then it's an overreaction to something I don't know anything about. And I've created this entire world in our, in, in my mind with respect to what I know and don't know about this person, because that's what we do. Again, in order to make sense of the world, we need to simplify it. And this is very, very destructive. And so to get back to what you are saying, you can learn from absolutely everybody. And this could be a, 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 your win, your small wins for the day. I want to learn something from everybody I speak to. Everybody, the janitor, everybody. I want to learn a little something from everybody I speak to. And you and I have had this conversation before. I've had some weirdly deep conversation in a steam room with some rando that lives in Poco, you know, and I might as well have been speaking to freaking like a genius as far as I was concerned. And I'm like, how did we even get there? And, 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 and wow, how, how many boats have I missed by trying to seek the people that are already known in their field necessarily, or, you know, whatever. So it's like, no, actually. And so the people that are generally successful in a very, very difficult areas are learning from everyone and they never, their sort of manhood, their womanhood, their peoplehood is never threatened by other people. It's very rarely threatened by other people. You know, uh, I'll give you an example of this. So for, for those that are not familiar with the special operation world in the United States, SEAL Team 6 is one of the best team there is as far as the special operation world is. And most people know they're the team that took bin Laden, all this good stuff. Well, you have the GBRS guys now that have there are two guys that create this company called GBRS. They have 20 years of combined experience on SEAL Team 6 with multiple war deployments. Like we were talking crazy, insane stories, right? And I watch them bring a civilian shooter that's never shot around at anybody, but he is a competitive shooter. And, you know, just the mechanics of the shooting itself and the hands and feet skills. I saw the GBRS guys give him all the credit in the world and be like, man, we brought any chance we got, we brought, do you know how many people would have been like, Hey man, how many times have you been in battle? Okay. Cause I've been in so many wars. I've shot back at people. I've, 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 I've ended, you know, bad guys. I did this, I did that. And, 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 and they could, they could be building up their, their, their own sort of feeling of accomplishment, their, their own persona and completely negate the little pieces that this guy can still provide them. But that's not what they did. They brought him in, gave him all the credit in the world, and they learned from him. Even if it's one or two little things that tweaked their games and took him to, took him to the next level. This is special operation mindset. This is why this is so critical. And you can get away from having that if the consequences of your actions are not catastrophic. But you're arguably, if we're going to be calling a spade a spade, from a financial standpoint, does running a $2 billion that gets driven into the ground a catastrophic event? The answer is yes. No, it is. It is. From a financial standpoint, it is. And so it's not a, comp a comparison of you know life, life and death, and it's not always life and death. But at the end of the day, if you're running a $2 billion company now and, it's, and, and you somehow crash it, that is a catastrophic f business and financial event. It is no question. And so it's important that despite the fact that we, you are not faced with physical harm, that you do not downplay some of the risks that's associated with some of the decision you make and what your attitude might be in relation to learning and continuous learning rather, and just having, you know, uh, the right people in there to do that. So those are all things, humility, controlling your self-talk, controlling fear, be driven, understanding your mission and your goal and why you're there in the first place and understanding that the road will get sort of blurry along the way. But if you continue to sort of walk in the right general direction, you'll eventually see markers along the way and you'll be able to steer yourself in a more directed manner to, 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 to the goal that you have set forth for yourself. And I think like one of the things is, you know, and you use this, well, I'm not sorry, not you, but it's this term is used a lot. I'm a really hard worker, mm -hmm. right? I think that obviously that is so there's so many different scales of hard work. Somebody, you know, in Africa could be working 16 hours a day, literally on, you know, a tablespoon of food and grinding it out, carrying coal on their back. And then we have a definition of 
doing 25 phone calls and that's a lot of work and I'm a hard worker, right? Or vice versa. So there's obviously this massive shift in what could be considered hard work. How do these hyper successful people, right, define hard work? Is it goal based? Is it driven based? Is it micro wins? Is it consistency? How are they defining this as hard work? I don't know that there's a standardized definition. You know, I don't know that there is. And 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 I mean, I'm going to I'm going to suggest that it probably isn't because it's an individual pursuit and everybody needs everybody needs the path to be the path that works for them. Right. And so for me, it was purpose based, for example, you know, so the micro wins and all those things that you named are a part of ha- of a process. The process is organizing your work. Because you can be the hardest worker in the room and never go anywhere. If you're, if, if you actually, if the, if the work that you do is incongruent to the goal that you set, right. I don't know if that makes any sense, but you, you need to start, you need to start being the person that you want to be, not continuously stay the person that you are. You need to start pushing yourself outside. So for example, I'll give you an example of that. If you had somebody that's been, you know, working for people forever and they they decide that they want to move on to a, a more of a leadership role, those types of things. And so when you give them a task to do so, Sean says, you know what, I've 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 I I know and you've you've verbalized that you want to take more of a of a leadership part in this endeavor. So I'm going to give you this task. This task will help you, you know, kind of brush up your leadership, whatever. And what did the person do? They take the task, they sit down, and over the weekend, they're in the office working. At night, they're working. During the morning, they're working. But nobody else, nobody else is involved, right? Okay, so what you have done now is you, you are if, effectively the hardest worker to never get promoted ever, right? Because right now, what you need is to start working on those leadership chops, so let's start learning about decentralizing your command. Let's start learning about having people coming in for you to brief them on what needs to happen and then give them the power and the responsibility because power without responsibility is useless. How am I not going to be a micromanager? How am I going to get the people to be happy to work for me in this project? What am I going to learn from this process? And you establish a process. Well, it's, it's exactly what needs to happen. So whatever that looks for you, you need to establish a process that allows, allows you to, to essentially successfully negotiate absolutely everything that comes down the pipe at the highest to the lowest risk, fa- risk factors. So this is kind of ties right into your fear talk, right? Stick to the process and, 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 and whatever that looks like for you. And so I don't like to say, well, there's, 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 a, there's a better way to do it. There's only multiple ways to do it. The better way to do it is whatever works for you. And you'll only find that through introspection, through coaching, if you don't have enough experience, those types of things. So to that point, and we're going to kind of go into that right now, obviously, and I know you're not in real estate, but I'm sure you're hearing it everywhere because it's on the news and the whole nine yards. Some people are calling it real estate crash, gloom and doom. Some people are calling it it's a recession. It's whatever it may be, there's definitely a shift within our market, 100%, right? Mm-hmm. So we have brand new agents that have been around for a year or two that have never been in bad times. We have agents that are just starting that are now in quote unquote bad times, right? We have agents that have experience that may have stumbled before and now are trying to rebuild their businesses. It's all this fear in the market. Is there, and and statistics to prove it, there is 40% less sales. There are, there is an actual, we can't, can't say that this doesn't exist, right? But if I look back in history, this is where some of the biggest overachievers have got their footstep. This is where they become overachievers. This is where they blew up is in markets like this, where there is massive opportunity. How do we overcome, and I know you just put, uh, mentioned it there as well, it's like that consistency, stay on track, repeat, whatever it may. How do we stay consistent when everybody else is telling, quit, go get an Uber job? Mm-hmm. Um, how do we, um, how do we not so much talk away the naysayers, because that's part of it, obviously, right? But how do we work through this and not just work through this to survive, right? If you were in our shoes and you're a realtor, Right. Let's say you're just brand new and this is where you're going. What are you going to do 
to survive the next couple of years and thrive more than survive thrive. Mm-hmm. And I don't mean obviously a- actionable steps per se, but you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it, this is a really interesting conversation because surviving or thriving are outcomes, right? And I am not outcome bias. The, the, and bear with me here. Yes, there is going to be an outcome and I want that outcome to be favorable, but I am not outcome biased and I'm not outcome focused because if you start outcome focusing, now you're again, spotlighting, increasing the amount of fear, you're magnifying the risk, you're doing all kinds of stuff that will lead you to divert from the process that has worked for you and then launch you into something weird that isn't going to work for you. And you're going to make your situation worse. Okay. So the market is tight. There's, there's, there's chatter going on, whatever, cut the white noise, focus on your process, focus on the things that you control. There's three things, three spheres of influence in life, the things you have direct control over direct influence over, then you invest in those, the things that you have some influence over, you invest some of it in in there, some of your energy in there. And if it doesn't work out, you only had a limited amount of influence. But if you, if there are certain things that are completely outside your sphere of influence, cut it. You can't do anything. Worrying isn't going to do you any favor at all. In fact, it's going to, it's going to steer you away from the things that you should be doing to be successful the way you have and continue to be. Okay. There has been plenty of time in my career plenty of times where there has been absolute frenzy where we had courses with you know 60 or 70 percent dropout rate or people failing everywhere and it would have been so easy to be 70 percent 80 percent or 90 percent of these people will not make it that must be me not once did it enter my mind not once it doesn't matter because it doesn't matter it is absolutely an accepted fact that maybe i will not make it I've accepted that. I'm I'm not I'm not but I but that's outside of my sphere of influence. What does it matter? I can worry about it all day. This is like being in a relationship and 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 and, and the person that you're with and you're you you know you're you're overly invested in finding out where they are and being controlling in their movements because in case they meet someone and maybe they live in a you know it's like hey man if they want to do something it's going to happen whether you are scared or not. Boom. Done. Okay, so it's exactly the same for you guys. There, there, there's some chatter. Just understand a few things. Everything, the spotlighting effect applies to the collective, and it to a certain extent, it's worse because then it starts, it starts being blown up, blown out of proportion. Because that's what happens. You and I are having a chat. I'm telling you that there's a certain event in my life that may lead to me needing medical attention. When you repeat that story to somebody else, I'm likely to be dying. When that other person hears a story, I'm dead already. Okay. So that's what humans do. We, we, we like sens- sensationalism because sensationalism makes us feel like we, we actually knew something that other people didn't. So what I am saying is, Yes, there, there is data to back up the fact the market might be difficult. Around that, the fear that's proliferated by a variety of different people is likely to be grossly overinflated. Okay. So it doesn't matter either way. You can control any of those things. Maybe in two years, you're something else than a realtor. It doesn't matter. That's outside your, 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 your field of influence. But what you do have influence over is the process to be as tight as you possibly can, to have the things that you know you need to be doing so that you may be as successful as you can in light of the current cir- circumstances and continue to do that. One of the things that always drive, sort of drove me crazy during the course of my career is when when leaders are actually have a process to deal with certain things. And when those, the parameters around those things are changing, they start questioning their, their process. And now they're reevaluating, reevaluating paralysis by analysis sinks in and all these other factors. So my question was always the same. Do you trust your process? Yes. Let them go. Right. And I'm referring to very specific event. I'm, I'm events where, you know, during a hostage rescue, for example, like there, there, there's been many hostage rescue unbeknownst to most of the, the people here in the lower mainland over the course of the last 14, 15 years, four of which I was involved with as a team leader and as an operator. But also there was one after I'd left the team, 
that went majorly wrong and the one of the hostages was killed basically by us, which is absolutely catastrophic as far as the team is concerned. There's no question. And so what ended up happening is there was this big investigation process that the investigative, the police of uh, independent office was investigating all those things and there was no wrongdoing there it was a dynamic event that was extremely extremely dangerous and some somebody got got that shouldn't have been hurt got hurt killed and so the leaders at, you know at the helm of the of the outfit at the time were 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 consistently reassessing well do we want to send the guys back to work you know like there's public pressures there's this there's that i'm like okay ho hold on how would you normally treat this well, normally we do this, 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 this. Do you trust this process? Absolutely, we do. Did you apply the same process with some consistency to this situation? Yes, let him go. Like you are now, you are now changing things on account of your circumstances and it's not going to help you. So focus on your process, focus on the things. If there is, if you have shortcomings that could potentially be detrimental to your success, in light of what's going on. So I'll give you an example of this and it's totally made up, but imagine if the new trend was TikTok sales, right? And you're like totally not technologically savvy, nor is anybody, anyone in your company and you're absolutely not going down that route. And the entire trend is going down that way. And now you're not adjusting. Well, you're, you're, you may miss the boat, right? So if you have some serious shortcomings or things that you need to work on so that you accentuate or optimize the chances of success, then by all means, go ahead and do that. But fear is useless. It's and it's 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 useless. Like yes, it can help at time because it can tell you something's wrong here and I need to just be careful, but you have to be really, really careful. That's a reasonable amount of fear and not a debilita debilitating fear or a fear that's gonna send you into a frenzy to try to take actions that are completely unreasonable or outside the norm of what you normally would do on account of trying to overcome them. It's not going to work. So all that aside, once you've made peace with this and you're like, I can I can control what I can control. Those things are outside my areas of control. I'm going to focus on me. How am I going to be as successful as I can? What are some of the things I need to work on? And then drive through it. And next thing you're going to find out is that either things weren't as hard, weren't as bad as they were, that you'd done a lot better than everybody else that was magnifying the risk and started doing all kinds of weirdness in order to overcome whatever perceived impediment in the market. And they ended up shooting themselves in the foot, or the whole thing is going to crash and being afraid wouldn't that change anything. So it really doesn't matter. You know, it's just having that, that, that drive. And it's that clear focus and vision, letting everything else outside of that box kind of float away, not really worried about it, not focusing on that. Right. Mm -hmm. I love what you did say though, too. And one of the things like, obviously in this market, there's going to be some things that worked really well in the last two years that may not work now. So you're not saying you don't have to necessarily adapt or switch or whatever it may be a little bit, but I think too, for myself, um, when things get tough, right. Or difficult or whatever it may be. And, um, it's also, I try not to overanalyze kind of like what you're saying, because it's very easy when things change to get into analysis paralysis. It's very easy. Like even both sides, we're hiring tons of agents to Stonehouse. There's been some agents that are leaving and it's like, well, the market's changing. What do I do now? Right. There must be something outside of me that I can basically help or whatever. And obviously biased, we can definitely help on some certain things, right? But the reality is, is even no matter what you say, what I say, it's not going to help if they don't apply, right? And if they don't execute. And for myself, the one thing that I've noticed, and I know you have as well, is when times get tougher, one of the things that reduce that stress on, on my life is that I'm even more consistent. I'm even, you know, I'm, I'm tougher on myself, not mentally that the world is coming after me, right? But it's like something that I put on my Instagram today that I genuinely believe is no one is coming to save you, be your mm -hmm. own hero, right? So at the end of the day, we can sit here and worry, or I can put my nose to the grind. And like you said, and this is, you know, one of the things that a lot of the Stoics talk about, right, is the fact that you they meditate on the fact that they're going to die. And I know that sounds really like gloomy and whatever it may be, but exactly like what you said with the market, exactly like what you dealt with in the last 
dozens of years on the forces, right? There's a fact that you're gonna walk through that door and there's gonna be a bullet between your eyes, right? There's a fact that the market absolutely crashes. That's why there's millions of preppers. You know what I mean? Thinking we're gonna, there's gonna be nukes flying from Russia soon. You know, I get that every day in my inboxes, mm -hmm. right? Um, so, and those things all might be realities. Hopefully not, but they all may be realities. Yeah. But if we stop everything we're doing and we don't put our nose to the grind and continue forward and work on bettering ourselves every day, right? Those things, if they come, they come. Yeah, dude. Like for me, this this is, you know, it has zero factor in my decision making. It is zero. Like it it doesn't it doesn't matter. Like one of the things it's there's a difference between being a cowboy and addressing things completely oblivious and re, regardless of the of the potential risk but it's another thing to have a process to deal with risk and when the risk increases that process stays the same at the end of the day it doesn't change if the consequences are worse or better and so focus on the process to your success don't focus on the outcome necessarily if you are outcome biased you will change your process if you change your process you will not do the things you set forth to do to make you what you want to be so it, it it sounds like a like an oversimplification it isn't it's it's actually it's actually a fairly simple concept there are certain things you control and certain things you don't control the things you don't control you you have no control over them stressing over them isn't going to help at all and when you find yourself sort of drug into the the mental spin or the fear because that happens periodically it happened to me when i retired you know financial stressors would would percolate and come up and all of a sudden i didn't know if i was going to be successful in this and that and questioning myself and i'd be like stop stop go through the mindset go go through your the, you know your your logical override what got me here why did I decide to leave? What kind of skill set did I bring to the game? How valuable can my skill set be in the corporate world? How can it be to other people? How can I help? How can I, you know, and next thing I know, that fear is now, boom, gone, right? And then I will do the things and be completely unimpeded for two weeks. And then two weeks from now, driving, thinking about absolutely nothing, I will have a super fearful moment where all this comes back to life all of a sudden. And it's like, I'm going to fail. It's not going to work, but whatever, whatever. So guess what I do? exactly what I did last time. Wait, where do you start? Why are you here? What is your purpose? What is the mission? You know, those types of things. And then gone again. And so if you're able, and, and so it, the idea is that our subconscious mind doesn't have a concept of time. It doesn't know if something was addressed really in reality or if it, if it was only at the theoretical level. So we're able to do things and we use that in training all the time to recreate scenarios and situation. And that's what makes visualization such, such a powerful technique is because your subconscious self and your, all your inner being does not necessarily know the difference between real and false. And so you're able to create a world that you want and drive a reaction that you want from yourself preemptively before anything happens. And when the thing does happen, you live up to that pre-established response that you were seeking for yourself. And so, yes, fear is going to come. That's a fact. But logically override it. You do the things that you need to be doing. If in two years, everything crashes and you end up having to reassess where you are career-wise, this can happen to absolutely everybody. You can be a, a fisherman on high seas, break, have a bad break on a leg, and you now are no longer able. You can be a construction worker, an engineer, an architect. I don't care what you set your, your mind to be and how successful you want to be at it. All the tools that you need to be very successful at something will help you be successful at something else. Like stop, you know, stop, stop letting anything define you to the point where if anybody or anything takes it away from you, you're nothing. Very destructive. Love it. Love it. Awesome, brother. I was going to, um, I know you got to go to, and I really appreciate you coming on board here, man. It's been awesome. Uh, we have like 90 something people at points. Um, yeah, Amazing. I really, really appreciate 
all of the awesome information you're giving. Um, how can they follow you on Instagram, Facebook? You are doing some coaching. I know you're it's different levels of different things that you're going to. So I'll let you uh, chat with them on that. But what's the best way to get a hold of you or follow you, check your content, et cetera? Yeah, I mean, most of most of the people, which is interesting, are generally reaching me through my personal Instagram account, which works fine for me. I mean, I I seem to spend way too much time on it, but at the very least, if there's if there's people that I can connect with, and if there are things that I can help with, then then by all means use that. So uh, I don't know. I'm. I guess you could link it in the uh, if you will. post this, you'll link it in the details. But um, my my personal Instagram is probably the best way the best way to reach me. Uh, we're working on a website, but I'm doing my master's right now. And once in this, I got seven months left. And when I'm done in seven months, I will really sort of get the website up and and do all the stuff and and exempl- exemplify all the things that I can do. But I don't want to do that now because I don't want to be too busy while I'm trying to get the studies done. And so I just want to make sure that, you know, I mark the stu- the, the study field with excellence also before I move on to something else. And I love so it. There's, there's a lot, there's a lot to learn from you. We're going to bring you on hundred uh, percent again in the future. Like I love some of the stuff where you focus your mind and, you know, time on time off with the training. And I, I love all that stuff before I let you go though. Can you tell them what you're getting your master's in? Cause I'm pretty sure it's the coolest master's degree that you can possibly get. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, it, it, theoretically it's international security, global counterterrorism. So it's an international degree of global counterterrorism basically. Yeah, and um yeah, I mean, I, you know, you know what? More importantly, it's extre- it's fascinating. It's fascinating. So this is this is one thing. If you are going to go for higher education, make sure it's interesting because when you start reading academic paper, you're taking the fun out of reading real quick. So if you <laughs> at, at least at least if 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 the reading is captivating and the events are captivating, you can really dive in and 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 be successful. So I'm I'm loving it. I've been asked to potentially when this is all over, I've been asked to, uh, to potentially partake as, as, as one of the instructors. So I have to, I have to finish, you know, obviously and be successful at the level at which I, I expect for myself. And then, and then, and then after that, I will consider all my options. That's awesome, brother. That's awesome. Thank you again. I really appreciate it. You're the perfect guy to start it off this year. And uh, yeah, I will definitely link all your contact information when we chop this up and put it on YouTube and everything. And uh, yeah, thank you again. I really appreciate it, brother. And uh, have an amazing day. Awesome. Thanks a lot for having me. See you guys.